Guys, am I hallucinating or this is what's happening now, man? African entrepreneur, we're not playing by the same role or the global ecosystem, man. We're just not, man. And, and if we don't wake up and figure out how to catch up to the game, man, we're going to lose. We're just going to lose, man. I come across some crazy information and I have to share, man. I, I got to share because I'm not going to say it makes me upset, but it makes me realize that, you know, we live in a global ecosystem now. And not everybody is playing by the same rule. That's a fact. But if we don't wake up, man, what, what are we left of? We, we're just going to be spectated to this game, man. We're not going to be players anymore. But check this video. Don't fear failure. As long as it's not going to kill you, it's going to make you what? Stronger. What, what am I talking about? What, what, what is this, all this fuss about? Well, you know, first of all, I want you to check uh, a few of the videos and, 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 and stuff that I'm about to put on. And then you'll understand a little bit better what I'm talking about. The WE Company, parent company of WeWork, is the latest in a string of startup unicorns set to go public this year. Its core business revolves around leasing whole buildings or parts of buildings, transforming them into hip co-working spaces and then renting them out to everyone from startups and freelancers to large enterprises. WeWork is now the single largest office tenant in New York, and SoftBank's valued it at $47 billion. But just like other newly public companies such as Lyft and Uber, WeWork is not turning a profit. In fact, it's hemorrhaging cash. Believe it or not, they lost more money last year than even Uber did. They burned through $1.9 billion in cash, and that was actually greater than the amount of money they brought in, their revenue. How fast are you growing? Very. What kind of numbers <laughs> are we talking about? We're talking about probably one of the fastest physical expansions that uh, has been seen for the past 10 years. Right. It's the sort of tech startup playbook, growth at all costs. And at least in the private markets, investors have been fairly receptive to this model. That's why WeWork, as well as Uber and Lyft, Pinterest, many others have been able to raise so much money. So this is the other thing about the sort of Jedi mind trick that WeWork has presented to investors that are giving it such a lofty valuation is, you know, renting offices, you know, isn't really rocket science, right? So the risk is that they build WeWorks in a huge number of buildings at phenomenal expense and don't have enough tenants. And so if you have the full load of costs of renting and building out all of these offices and furnishing, you know, kegs of beer and new ping pong balls, and you don't have tenants, it's going to be very difficult for them to rationalize those costs. Now, valuations are very interesting, Joe. I keep talking about it. I've done a lot of vlogs about valuations. And valuation is, is buyer and seller, right? You, you're selling something, which is the valuation part. And if something buying, well, that's what the value is. But it's crazy how valuation differ from region, countries, and all those things, right? So you have a better chance uh, uh, to, to sell a, a certain valuation uh, to, if, you, if you're based in Europe or in the States than if you're in Africa. In Africa, your valuation will always be linked by your sales. I don't care what people say. I've, I've, I've talked to dozens and dozens of investors. It's always the same thing. Yeah, your sale is low. Yeah, but we have data. We, have, we, 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 we tap into over a, a quarter of a million customers right now. Doesn't mean doesn't mean anything. You know, data has no value in Africa or, or very little. I've yet to see that same data. If I took that same data, that same company and, and, and provide that same information, I can use the sales, the value of my technology. Another thing is your technology in Africa has no value either. It's all about sales. It's about, you know, if, if you develop a technology and you want to sell it, it's going to be very difficult to do so in Africa. So your data outside in Europe or in the States, I don't know about Asia, but I'm sure it's the same now. Your data, your technology has value. So you can bump up your, your, your valuation 
you know, much, much easier. But you've seen those companies, right? They're losing billions of dollars. I did the same vlog uh, with, with the, 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 the African companies that, were, that went public in, in, the, in the States. Yeah, I forgot the name. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, it'll come back to me at some point. But uh, Jumia, there you go. So Jumia, I talked about it, but, that, but this is what's happening. You have companies that are able to, to become a billion dollar company, but they're losing billions of dollars, or they have none or, or very low revenue to, 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 uh, to dictate why they value at a billion dollars. But they're able to sell the technology, they're able to sell additional stuff. It's a sales story. So if you have a lead investor, for example, uh, that has a big name, right? Um, I'll pick a, a name like Microsoft. That's just a random name. There's others out there, but it's a random name. If I, if I pick, if let's say A-Red has a lead investor called Microsoft and we're raising uh, $50 million at a half a billion dollar valuation. Well, because that name is associated by, with your company, number one. And that, that company, that name, Microsoft, is very well known. Investor like, private investor, because I got a separate private and public, but pri private investor be like, wow, these guys are in. They must believe they're already a big company. They must know what they're talking about. Um, I'm, in interest, I'm interested to get in at that valuation. Automatically, you value that. It doesn't matter if you're making a billion dollar or, or $10 billion, zero dollar. It doesn't matter. Your valuation is what it says on paper. So it's paper money, basically, right? Until somebody buys it or sell it or become public and all, but it's paper money. And we are unable, unable to create that ecosystem right now in Africa. I can't tell you how many times they tell me, oh, this is a technology, yeah, it's unique, but hey, build a business case. And I'm not saying they're totally wrong, but I'm saying is, let's say there's an A-Red Ronda, which is me, Henry, how oh, happy in there, you know, to develop it, uh, the technology. And then there's an a A-Red, there's a, another company, let's call a company A in the States with the same technology, the same solution, no revenue. They will generate, I mean, if they can sell and all those things, but they'll be able to raise so much money, they will crush me as A-Red Ronda in a heartbeat because they'll raise 100 million, come into the market, flood the market, make sure I'm out of the game. And then as soon as I'm out of the game, they start charging or whatever. That's the game. The game of, you know, growth over revenue. Massive, massive growth. You cannot do that without having capital. You gotta have capital to feed the growth you know, over revenue, and then you build. And I love that model because that's what technology and innovation is. It takes a long time. So you build, you build, you build, you know, you burn through cash and build a whole, whatever it is, let's say you in e-commerce or in our case, you build a huge network. And then when you get that network, you, you know, you crush whatever competition out there if needed. If not, then you do whatever it takes. And then from there, you finally, start monetizing you know that's why amazon did all those big companies did but you can't do that as an african company so guys check out this video check out this video uh right after this it, it, it defines exactly what's happened and when you look at at what's happening you select who's who who's the african team in entrepreneurship and who's the international team it really really opened my mind open your mind of what's happening and it, and it hurts me to say but this is exactly exactly what's happening on the ground
I just want to end with this. We know the game is rigged. I mean, it is. You know, just, just the facts of life. It's rigged. But the question we need to ask ourselves, how do we play this game so we still have a chance to win? You know, and, and uh, one, one of the things we have to figure out is how to strengthen this ecosystem, how to get all the, the, the key players, the funders, the companies, um, the, 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 the decision makers, and all those guys come up with a solution, man. Because again, all this stuff that's happening is the reason why you see more innovation coming from outside in than inside out. It's just that simple.